Are you enjoying it? <laughs> Michael, I just want to say thanks for having me here and congratulations with your book. Um, listening to it, I can't wait to get home to have a read of it. From what I hear, the two boys are sending myself and Charlie to Nish Turk Bjog for a week's holidays after all of that running around the place. Um, if you just give me a second here, I'll try and get this up to, because it's a bit low. There you go now, that's lovely. Um, I'm going to do a couple of pieces here for you. Um, the first piece I'm going to start with is about um, a character um, from out the Morrisk direction um, that we all uh, knew of and remember. Sadly, she's passed on now. And uh, this poem um, is called The Wandering Wayfarer, but everybody refers to it as Kathleen's poem. So, um, with, without further ado, The Wandering Wayfarer. She roams on the roadside from here to there, an old woolen cap pulled down on her hair, a straw shopping bag with some bottles of beer she oft times buys for her brother. Where the winds off the sea meets the flag of the storm, by the well in the sea marsh, by the cold light of dawn, Haunting the wayside and looking forlorn on the business she does for her brother. A canine companion oft times trails in her wake, a walking flea circus as thin as a rake, who's used to the weather and strolls for the sake, a present once got from her brother. But what would she do if her brother lay dead? Would he still ask for bottles of beer in her head? Or would the old dog be ever more led? along the path she has trod for her brother. And as sure as the wave races up Cockle Strand, and the sea keeps turning as the tide to the land, she's carved out her folklore with her own gentle hand, and the love she has shown for her brother. Shane. Um, this is a little poem, uh, being as it's the week that's in it and the subject we're covering this evening. Um, you know, we're all pilgrims. We're all passing through here and we're all seeking our own mountain. And you know, we're lucky enough to have one physically here. You know, it's uh, as was heard earlier, we'll fight for it, you know, it's ours. And it, it's been said over the last few years, you know, the abuse of the mountain that has gone on is phenomenal in the last few years. You know, if somebody has a cold now, they'll be running up and down the mountain for you. So all I can say is, it's something that we treasure. And as locals, it is our job to be its guardians. A native view of the reek. There's a magical, mystical mountain on the coast of Old Mayo. A reminder of God's greatness to us native folk below. Where pilgrims come from far and near to climb its hoary head. To the little chapel on its top where the Holy Mass is said. Its name it is Crow Patrick, this hill of which I speak. But to us who live in its shadow, it's known simply as the Reek. Where long before we heard a Christian bell, to our pagan race a sacred place as well, where druids danced at Lunasa, it is said, and at dark Samhain built a fire for the dead. Did heroes of the old times climb its back, or wind their way along its well-worn track, or further before the fated fight, upon its wind-whipped shoulders spend a night, or Finn, with his faithful hunting hounds, chase great stag below, this most holiest of grounds, until the pious man we'd once enslaved returned once more, our pagan souls he saved, and on that very mountain made his stand, while he banished all the demons from the land. There on the judgment day, so the ancient legends say, he lead our souls towards paradise, up its steep and well-trod way, and won't it be a fine sight, when we all bend our backs to climb, all Mayo folk together in harmony divine. Goramaha got the car, Jeff.